Hi, this is Dr. Purav Gandhi. Welcome to the Future of Health series by Health Arc Insights. In this series, we're going to talk about some of the latest trends shaping the future of healthcare and life science industry. Our first topic is digital therapeutics. Digital therapeutics has been a buzz in the healthcare industry. But what is really digital therapeutics? The definition differs from individual to individual. However, let us try to clarify the myths around digital therapeutics. Digital therapeutic is not any other digital health application. These are those applications that are evidence-based, which have been vetted within randomized controlled trials. And now there is enough evidence to back that they really work. The outcomes that they generate have been quantified and hence can be submitted to a regulator for approval. Digital therapeutics are prescription applications. So these, like any other medical device or any other pharmaceutical pill will be prescribed by a doctor. Now, this is not a small market. This is not to be taken lightly. Digital therapeutics today are a two to three billion dollar market already. And we are just at the beginning of this industry. In next five years, this market will become at least five X in terms of size. And hence it's a huge opportunity. Everybody is kind of trying to get a pie of it. There is a unprecedented amount of investment coming in this market today. The largest amount of market is focused in North America, especially in the US. But now this is becoming a trend in Europe as well as in Asia Pacific countries as well. Uh, some of the notable names in US like Livongo or ResMed or Omada have been in the market for a long time. These are established uh, digital health or digital therapeutic solutions. In India, there are some emerging solutions like for example, Wealthy Therapeutics or Xyla who have been growing within this space. Uh, now, let's talk about how these digital therapeutics work. Right? So, the trend started when applications started developing within metabolic space, within chronic disease space like diabetes. This would usually help in terms of improving management of diabetes, improving lifestyle management. It started taking place within obesity space, within hypertension or cardiovascular space. Then the category graduated, it started involving the mental health space. So, Digital therapeutics started playing a role within pain management. They started playing a role within depression, anxiety by providing cognitive behavioral therapy. De-addiction is a huge space where these applications have been playing a role. They provide humongous scale to what counselors can do at a limited scale due to bandwidth challenges. Now digital therapeutics can start solving it. Now innovators are taking it even further. So now digital therapeutics are playing a role within infertility space. Uh, within handling menopause or within any other hormonal challenges that women face. They are playing a role within gastrointestinal and re respiratory space as well. So the opportunity has been expanding, but this is not an easy space to be. We only wish it were. There are so many different challenges. This is not a software like any other application. So the US FDA categorizes this as software as a medical device. So the regulations for this software are as stringent as they would be for any other medical device. You have to build the code, you have to validate it, you have to do, uh, G you have to follow GXP compliance as you build this kind of software. Now, there are also challenges in terms of business model. It's not straightforward. You know you can buy a pill, either you would pay out of pocket or an insurer will reimburse it. But not so much for an application, it becomes more complicated. How would an insurer reimburse an application? What kind of a payment model would be built? Will there be a value-based payment model available for this? Thankfully, there is innovation going in this space and now there are a few contracts within the value-based space with digital therapeutics that are shaping the way for all the future entrants in the market. One of the biggest things to be successful in this area is collaboration. It's very hard to break into this category and be successful in a standalone way. As a result, we are seeing a lot of innovators now collaborating with the insurers, building types with insurance on taking this to a larger scale, having types with pharmaceutical companies so they could go as a companion application to an established medication and improve outcomes. They're also partnering with consulting organizations, partnering with organizations who do patient services and hence trying to ensure that this fantastic solution, which has the ability to improve outcomes at scale, reaches to the patients at a faster space. We at HealthArc are really, really interested in this space and have been spending a lot of time 
to know, track all the developments, identify the best practices in building digital therapeutics. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to engage with us to talk more on digital therapeutics as a topic. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, in our next video, we will be talking about synthetic control arms, which is again a big trend these days within clinical trials. So stay tuned.